Okay guys, this is going to be a windy one here. I am at Watmore Farm Fisheries. I'm just having a casual afternoon session. It is early bird catches the worm. As they say, the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, it is quarter to three in the afternoon. I've just thrown the bait out. Now, there's loads of complicated baits, different types of baits, flavors, everything on the fishing tackle market. I want to see what I can catch on this. Yes, a loaf of bread. It's much maligned, it's not used much. I'm using chunking great big pieces of flake here. I've got two feeder rods out. I just slopped up some bread. I'm going to slop some more up in a minute. I've just thrown it out here. It is horrendous, the wind. It is 20, 25 knot gusts. Uh, I'm just out there. No chance of float fishing, which I'd like to do. I just want to see what I'm going to get on big pieces of bread flake, big chunks of it. And I've got two quiver tip rods. At the moment, they've both got feeders on them little cage feeders and big hooks, flake. The first one I cast out, I got hit on the drop. <sighs> Couldn't believe it, missed it. Carp, I'd say. Second one I've chucked out, I've got hit as well. Screwing around with the camera, yes, that's right. And missed that one as well. So I've been out no more than, I don't know, for two minutes, barely two minutes. So you are really hot off the press here. I've got high rod rests here. So it keeps it up like that. So if there's any drift or drag, it's not going to snag my rod tops. And basically, I just like having them up there. I like to be indifferent. I don't want to be the same as everybody else. Avon rods, I don't know what it is. Six pound line, five pound line. I think it might be five, actually. It's what I normally use. Oh, God, did you see that bite on that right <laughs> I'm hoping you saw that one, guy, because I'm going to get crashed in a minute. Um, so what I'm doing is mushing up here, look, bread. Brown bread and white bread, whatever I can get hold of, just regular slice stuff. Look, it's cheap. Do you know what it is? Do you know what this stuff costs? 40 pence a packet. 40 pence. What's that in American? 30 cents or something like that? I've got to keep looking up because I'm going to lose a rod. So there we go. Plain white sliced bread. Mush it up, throw it in, crumble it with your fingers, I'll show you in a second. Follow it up with a big flake. Be prepared to stand by your rods very good chance especially on commercial fisheries it could be the bait of the century do people use it do you guys use it out there I'm sure you do but there's a lot of guys beginners that don't there's a bite on that right hand one guys there it is small roach on it when that quiver tip stops moving that's a sign a carp's moved in and he might suck the whole piece of bread flake up oh we, we missed him, we missed him, one-handed, filming again, Graham. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that feeder off, because I think it's a bit clunky. I use what's called a link ledger. I just want that bread flake going down slowly, resting on the bottom, because I've chucked half a loaf out there already, all slopped up, lovely. So they'll slurp that up. So I'll probably change my rigs. I might have one more cast with the feeder. Man alive, it's howling. Thank God I've got this beautiful screen of trees here perfect shelters and I'm not fishing down there you notice I've got my rods way back here right right hat off let's hang that up there oh, that's bad luck are you guys superstitious I want it hanging up but with the awesome face in that way okay this is the one I missed a bite on my god I thought that was me it's not it's another fish on hit the other one it could be a line I'm just going to show you what I'm on I'm going to give it I've had two three bangs so there are I've got, you guys going to see that trusty old cage feeder that slides down and is stopped by a barrel swivel, I don't bother with a shot, I just tie another link of line on here and I'm using that stroffed stuff with a big wide gate but quite fine wire barbless sharp hook, a B something or other, I'm not going to mention the model because they don't give us any free ones or pay us to say anything nice about their hooks but they are nice so I've got to like them, they will open out in a big fish break a piece of bread flake off, push it through the hook, squeeze it relatively tight, but I squeeze it hard just there, over the eye of the hook, you see, and I'm leaving the point clear. This is so easy, it's ridiculous. Okay, here we go with the, the feed. A little bit of mushed up bread, brown bread, doesn't really make a difference. I do like white bread for the uh, hook bait, I have to say, just this is very sloppy. We mix it up like that, push it in the cage, and then because you're only fishing close in, you can get away generally with an underhand lob. I am barely 
two rod lengths out underhand lob bosh any time from now you could get a hit even on the way down guys I joke not okay check your drag I'm going to bring the other one in because I've had a huge bang on that one this one I'm just going to tighten just tension the, the rod tip barely now there we go let's get the other feeder in same thing with this one Holy sh! We're on sh! Christ, <laughs> guys! Oh no! Oh no! We're on. We are on. Couldn't even get the other one. I had that feeling. I just had that feeling. We're trying to get down if about three days of work and stuff just stopped me. And here we go. That's a giant piece of bread flake for you. But we're not going to be a big fish. But you guys, you beginners out there, don't neglect bread flake on big hooks, big pieces. Let's get this guy in. I've got my mat there. Got the dreaded, I'm not going to say the word, C-A-R-P barrow there. I'm going to stand up for this one. I only stand up for the better fish. I did tell you that you might get one on the drop, didn't I? I did say that. I did say that, guys. You've got to listen to your Uncle Graham. And here at Watmore, they do give you good old crank around on the rod. Avon rod, I think they're pound and quarter cup, quick test, test curves, one back wind as well as a drag. I'm still toying with the idea of taking that feeder off. There's a lot of rain around today. Anyway, let's get this one in the net first, Graham, before we start blowing the trumpet about giant jumbo pieces of bread flake. I think this fish is not four or five pounds, actually. I may be wrong. Give it some side strain. And by giving some side strain, you actually tip the fish over on its side. Makes them use different muscles. Oh, I've got to show you this guy. Oh, he's moved. Really nice buddy. Well, this is a scrapper. Uh, he's about four. He is about four or five, which I guess is the average. Hoping you get this. I've no idea what the wind noise would be in the mic. I'll click it off until I get this one in the net for you. He's in. There we go. A miracle up, guys. First one on the bread flake. We go. Splash right in the face. Why do I do such stupid things, Graham? Unbelievable. Now I'm covered in it. Camera, face. Dear, oh dear. Guys, don't release them in the water. Put them on the way, Matt. On the baby changer. I'm, I'm buzzing now. I want to get that out again. Right. Little tip. If your hands are wet, make sure they're dry before you put the next piece of bread flake on. I'm not sure this couple of loaves of bread are going to go very far today, but you never know. Run for it again quickly. Let's just clear that tip. Big hook, that's actually gone around the back of the eye, that's it, big hook, jumbo piece of flake, put it through and squeeze the flake and pinch the flake hard here, don't put it hard over the hook, you want this to fluff up in the water. Let's get our, I'm going to run out of ground bait but hopefully we'll get you a few fish out of it. God almighty that didn't take too long did it, hey? that did not take too long. Quarter three I've got here, ten minutes, two fish missed, I've got one already. I'm just watching other guys over there just sitting, get some bread. Bosh, get back quick, run away. Lay the rod down, just put a bit of tension in it. Right, I'm all tensioned up there now. There, the wind will put the rest of the tension in it. Now let's get this one out. So if I get another fish or two guys, I will go over to a link ledger, which I feel is probably better here. I quite like these little cage feeders. They, the line, they slide up and down like this on the line. They've got a central 
central little tube there. But if you're fishing sloppy baits like I am today, they're quite good. They're quite good for sloppy bait fishing. Now you can see I'm just lobbing up. This one's going to be at four feet to the right. Still in the same swim. I mean, get straight back because you can get hit on the drop. And I'm touch ledger in there. Red glam over that bramble. There we go, bite on the left hand one. I think if I didn't have the feeder on there, I would probably get an even better ice <laughs> bite on both. I would get a better pull down bite. I'm just going to run this camera for a second just in case you guys can actually see the bite. Now if I stand there, I can't strike, but you might see the bite there. And now I've got to go right up to it, guys. Obviously, I'm going to miss the fish. That one's got a bite on it. If one of these crashes down, don't ever grab here and lift. Look, 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 because you will snap the rod there. I mean, I have done this before and caught fish, and I've just grabbed the line there. And you can see that's where I am. All sheltered in here. Good job I put that hat's not quite straight. Okay, that's guaranteed the fish is pointing towards the fish. Gotta have the awesome hat. I told you, I told you. Right, okay. Okay. We all know who that was. We know that was Smith. You at the back there. Well, people, it's a bit balmy at the moment. Carol's come around the end. I've been talking to her. I've hooked two fish and pulled out of both of them, fighting them, and the hook just come free. I've missed three other hookups that I should have got, messing around trying to sort the camera out. So I was trying to get it up on here. I'm going to put it up on the pole so you're shooting down that way and you might see the bite. I think there's absolutely no chance because the fish have moved in big time. So what I'm going to do is I notice I get a take straight away. I'm going to put this up on my head up here, take my hat off, put the lucky hat back on the stand, and I think within casting out, I might leave the camera running and you might just see a slamming overtake on bread because they're on it big time, guys. Bread is a phenomenal bait. What did I just tell you? What did I just tell you? I nearly lost the rod then. I just absolutely nearly lost the rod. Look, honestly, I haven't cut that or edited it. There's the rod, there's the reel. The other one's still out, God forbid it goes. I've got nowhere to put the camera. I can't even put it in my mouth. I'd always put it in my mouth. I have to balance it and try and try and then hold here. Well, guys, <laughs> you know the saying. Oh, oh no, the reel's falling off. You know the saying. There's anglers and there's danglers. I think it was a bit of a dangler then with the reel falling off. Reel seats were so worn away. This rod with fish that the reel seat uh, comes off. How the hell am I going to? I think what I'm going to do is have to put this camera down, guys, get this fish in the net for you and show him to you when I've actually got him on the mat. I think that's the safest thing. That's another one to go. Away you go. It is as windy as you could want. All right, I'm rigged up. What I want to do is, if possible, it probably won't happen now, so I'm going to do it, put two baits out really fast, one on top of the other, and see if we can't get you a take on camera, that's one, I'm doing this as fast as I can because the more bait goes in, the more bread's in there sloppy bread the more chance there is of a bite that's both of them in I mean I have had them on the drop just now and missed them both now I'm just going to tighten up oh that one's blind in the bushes, that's not I'm on, I'm on that's how fast it happens, guys. That is how fast it happens. I was caught in the bramble up there. Oh, two on. Oh, one's off. Have I got the second one? 
<laughs> two at once, man. Two at once. This has happened before. Now, I want to get this this one, if we can, out of the way. Somewhere, I think I'm inside. That was absolutely double whammy, wasn't it? So good when things, a plan comes together. Where's that? Oh no, don't, don't. Oh man. You know the plan I said comes together? It's just falling apart. It's turned into, it's turned into a god awful nightmare. Oh no. How am I going to get that sorted out? Oh well. I'll be with you just after the break. Hopefully not of the line. Knit one pearl two. Wrong way, Graham. That's clear. I'm actually playing this one by hand. Okay, here we go. Pick him up on the rod. Back in action on one. So double hook up and still hooked up with one. And the wheel's about to come off again. Where is the duct tape when you need it? Oh, there's some power. These little carps still have some power. I feel I've got to get rid of this. This is the guy that's giving me trouble with this piece of bramble here. If the wind is blowing my quiver tip line into the bramble. That was a big ground bait ball going in. Somebody using bigger ground bait than I am. That's stupid as well, Graham, leaving that down there for me to tread on. Net ready. Side strain. Well, I still want to get to show you the take. If we get this one in, we will do. I've also noticed sometimes the harder you pull a carp, the harder they pull back. And he doesn't want any of it. Come on. Got him, he's in. He's in. A tad bigger. A tad bigger. Back he goes. That's about seven hooked and lost. And three I've got. I'm determined to show you. A take. Try again guys. Two balls of brown and white bread on the feeder. White flake on the hook. I'm going to try and fire two in so fast it doesn't bear thinking about. That's the first one's gone in. I'm going to try and watch that rod top while I do the second one. Man that's going to give me a take. Both on top of each other. That's got to be a cluster coming there. Oh man, I had the bite and missed it. Watch your right hand rod. Right guys. I missed him. Hopefully he saw that bite, took the, took the tip right round. The downside is the bread is now, is now off the hook. On this one, that one's done. So I'm just watching this one here. Oh yeah, there's the bite. There's a little tail coming right up to it. It's a real risk. Yeah, a small roach banging at it. And also, it could be carp. If the ball of feeders, <laughs> ball of feeders like that, he's nibbling at the feeder, and my piece of bread flake is like there. One last try of two rods out at the same time. Take a bit more time. I want to go a little bit, let the wind took me that time. That one should be good. That's down. Here comes the second one. If you get two in together, tends to send them a little bit fruit cakey. That's just to the right, I just missed a bite on one rod. I cannot believe that wind keeps putting me up the tree. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Okay boys, here we here we go. There's a bite. These are the bites. I'm gonna put the camera right on it and take a risk. Just take a gamble so you can guys see what it looks like from this angle. 
And of course I was standing like an idiot all day. See the little roach, can you see the little roach tapping away there? Then that'll stop and then a carp will move in. It'll suddenly go still and then it's going to crash over. You see a roach are all around that feed. Now obviously the feeder is here, they're tapping away at the feeder as well. And Carol's just telling me they had six pound tench, which is really big for here. And I think it's a two two roach or something. That's a big roach. So it's all happening, it's all kicking off here, fish are getting bigger and bigger. And because I'm standing here like a lemon right next to my rods, we're not going to get a crash take. Here it comes. feel that one's ready to go. Feel it across my finger, it's tight, it's tight to the feeder. That's tight to the feeder. Just gonna walk back slowly. I'm not gonna look down, I'm gonna fall over. Hopefully if the rod goes, you'll see it. I did look down. One little tighten up. Just to there, bump the feeder. Quite fancy that right hand one to go off. And what I'm going to do is I've got a load of crusts here. I want the white like this. I want I want all the white. That's my hook bait, the flake, bird flake, and I've got crusts left. I'm going to slop them up, and they're going to make me more more of a mix in here because I've run out the brown. Um, oh, look at that bite on the right. That's a big roach. This will get mushed up, and that'll make me. Something else with a keep feeder. I was going to change the feeder, but I think I've got to stick to it. And the minute I look look away, something bizarre is going to happen. So I want to save all and keep these out of the sun, guys. Keep all the bread out of the sun because you want that flake. Oh god, a drop back. Huge drop back bite then. As I looked away. Keep this so it's moist, so look, you can just, oh, <laughs> there's the bread, there's the fish. Oh my God, that's not fighting like a carp. I wonder if that's a big roach. Oh, that's not, I'm not going to screw around here, guys, because that might be, a, they just had the odd big roach here. What is that? That feels a bit peculiar. Is that a cruise? Maybe it's a baby carp. Let's get around the other side. Well, you saw the size of bread flake I put on. Baby car. Little. There's the feeder. Just a little weensy common there, look. Last try at the double throw. Something wrong there, that didn't go out right. It's down. Second one. Now, this first hand rod could go off at any time. better straight back sinking 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 that's in the bottom there we go guys we just see if you can see that tip go Oh, notice how this line's going around that quiver tip. I didn't think that one cast properly, so next time in, it's gone around the back and through the hole. So I must have had a tangle with the feeder there. Oh, nearly. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Could be small carp hammering it. Who knows? Let you go, my boy, Bosch. So it's the other rod that's got the tangle. Oh, I've gone up that tree again. This has been pulled over by the last crash taking carp I had. Here we go. The trap is set. 
I've got plenty of bread here. That'll help. Hopefully pad out my ground bait stocks. This is the stuff I want for hook bait. Just chance the worst. All you gotta do is what I do, soak the bed up once, just like that, just dip it once. Let the surplus drain off it. Squeeze it out. And then mash it all in together. That'll hopefully clog into the feeder. If you do it too wet, it'll just shoot out the feeder. If you do it too stiff, it'll go gluey a little bit more. And when you do this, look all the particles coming out down there. Don't neglect to have a look in the margins every now and then. Where well, you've washed your hands off. I have caught many a carp by looking in there while I wash my hands. Guys, I'm going to uh, cast these two out. But I'm going to leave the tripod up here so there'll be no sound, only the wind noise. And that way I figure, with that angle you should be able to see if one of those rods goes over and I miss it. Because I'm missing more than I'm catching at the moment. Tell me if it goes. Well, I've got four carp uh, on the bread plate, so you can see big piece of bread plate do work. But what you can also do, if I can find my scissors, is you can suspend it just off the bottom by using a piece of crust. There's a sliced crust, you can use the edge of the crust, but I'll just show you this, which is what I do. You can break it with your fingers, but you'll find it's much easier just doing it um, with a pair of scissors, because you can get them about the size you want. So out of one piece of sliced bread, one edge as it were. I've got four baits and the feeder will sit here and this will rise up. You don't squeeze it on the hook too hard, you just let it rise up like that and as they move over the top they'll take it but this will break off easily. If you get one good bang of a bite generally that's it. Bring it in, bait up and throw it again. I'm going to put it on both of it. I think I'll put it on both rods and see if we can't pick a fish up for you. So look, there we go. It's exactly the same exactly the same cage feeder. All I'm going to do is get one of these bits of bread for you. There's the crust, that's the white the other side. I'll go through the white first. Hope you see this. Wow, that's windy. Twist it, try not to break it. Push the point in and just barely pinch the doughy bit like that. Around the eye of the hook, not the point of the hook. Let's get these two out there and see if we can't get one on what we used to call suspended crust or balanced crust it was really. There we go, left hand rod's out, right hand rod is now out. I'm just going to tighten up to them and we'll see if we can't get a take. Fairly short notice. Hopefully you can see those there guys. You can get, when you get carp going and they're feeding and they're taking the ground bait as it comes out of the feeder on the way down, then that piece of uh, tiny little crust suspended about six inches above the lake bed on the bottom is the first bit to get hammered. They don't have to go looking for it too far, it's in their face. And of course all the loose stuff that's coming out, I'm just tightening each time to that feeder to allow for the wind. 
each time the little particles tumble down through the water, they're going straight over the top of where the crust is. There was a good take there. Good take. Small carp or might have been a roach. Hopefully you're going to see this if it comes, guys. It looks good to me. All looks good to me. You can see straight away I'm getting bites there. And that again attracts the carp and it just goes a little bit quiet and then you should get the take from the carp. One thing is guys have got carp where well, I wash my hands down in close I can hear them splashing around. Oh, I... Sorry about the language people but that was that balanced crust for you. Other people turning up hopefully they don't come and fish next to me. And that was balanced crust just suspending it off the bottom just makes that difference. Trying to decide if this is a better fish or not. Sometimes you can see by the boiler swirl on the top, you know, that, oh, that might be eight, nine pounds. I don't think it is. It's a proverbial standard four pounder, or I guess, five pounder. A fish, nevertheless, and on a different bait, it shows you it works. Listen, guys, it's the same loaf of bread. And on top here, you've got the best of the crust at East End. At each at East End, ah, down the old East End, yeah. Get a lovely, lovely piece of the old loaf here, my son. I'm going to get my lights punched out now by some cockney around the corner. Leave it out, leave it out. Leave it out, get it in. What up, what up. Get this one in the net before I get a wallop. Going to get a smack, you are, pal. There we go guys, bigger fish, balanced crust. Oh, he's gonna go, he's gonna go about, maybe, f well, I don't think he quite, he might go six. If I caught a 10 shot big, I'd call it six for sure. Balanced crust, but there is one more final way. If I've got enough battery and memory card left in the camera, I'd like to show you. Let's get this one back first. Oh, he kicks me in the face. Yeah, I wanna call that one six. He's gone. I'm going to be using this, that rubber is just so floppy and loose, do not seem much good. I should use my uh, barrow thing there. Right, I'm going to try one with the flake. You've seen the balanced crust, so just run through this again. Big piece of flake, big piece. You want a big fish. You don't want a half pound carp, you want a nice big carp tight around the bend, mashed up bread around into or thereabouts the cage feeder and out into the swim. Gotta go slightly right with that one. Gotta put it in my newfound rod holder and we're gonna put that there. Like that. It's just hit the bottom. Smith, you at the back there. Just watch that rod top for me, Smith. Tell me when it goes. So what I'm going to do is when the fish are really feeding, just one shot and a single hook and touch ledger with a quiver tip rod can get you extra fish, which normally you would miss. So let's take this feeder off and just put the hook on all the time, keeping an eye on that kitty there. This rod rest seems to be okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I see the quivers. Quivers and the shivers. I'm going to snip that off. That's going in a minute, that right one. That is definitely going. So, straight through five pound line. I can see the eye will go through it. I'm trying to keep it high in case you can see that well behind go. 
do, you can do your tuck blood knot, you can do a stand up one, just all, oh, look, I'm gonna miss this, I'll hook myself in the finger, I can see it coming a mile away. Now, what size shot? You're gonna be governed by the wind here. So I'm probably gonna go for a treble A, I might even just go for a swan shot. One shot, just about a foot or so from the hook. Big hook, big bait. No, I'm not using the crisps for bait. Big piece of bread flake, hold it round, same procedure. Now this one, I can, I can hold this because as soon as it hits the surface, I might get a take on the drop. Now I can't show you visually, but I'm feeling across here, if there's a tug or a pull, put that camera down. I've got the line just across my fingertips here for any sort of pull. I'm going to walk back a bit, take a bit of tension on it. You can do this sitting down. The other thing, oh boys, can I tell you, can I tell you, anglers and danglers. All I felt was a tug across here because I've been getting lots of little bites. Now ordinarily, wow, he's on the move. Ordinarily, I would be fishing this method. If I want to pile some fish, I'm touch ledgering. Definitely when on the feed. Hope I haven't picked that other rod up. Let's keep it down low. But you can see that was maybe barely touched the bottom and it was away. I'm over the top of the other one. And this feels a halfway decent fish. I'll put the camera off because I am running low on battery. Guys, it came off. I was messing around trying to get the other rod out of the way and it actually came off. So, I will try that one again for you because it was pretty classic. All I'm feeling for is a tug or a pull. Big piece, big giant piece of flake. Here we go. Same spot. I might go overhand. Perfect. Now I'm waiting from this millisecond onwards. I think this camera picks it up. I'm down there. I'm waiting for the tiniest tug on these two fingers. The downside is the wind. You need a nice curve on the line, what we call a hang. And there you go, guys. How easy was that? If I was in a match, I would be using this method. All I'm feeling is the line pull because it's not pulling against the feed feeder, it's pulling against my finger. So I lost the last one, but you can see this method, touch ledger, is an absolute killer when it's used in conjunction with quiver tip rod, even quiver. Oh, I'm starting to get backache and oil, mate. What's this, number seven, I think? Can you imagine if I wasn't filming how many I could pile out here? Would have, would have been here an hour and a bit, hour and a half, messing around filming, telling Smith off. switch off. Not the good one. And guys you can get big fish. The downside of this is obviously I'm gonna to have to throw ground bait in to keep it. You haven't got the feed going in that you would have with a feeder. So if you're freelining you will have to start throwing a bit of ground bait to keep them around there. Two fish down there by the two different swells. I think you speak the other one. You need to keep the ground bait going in by hand rather than with the feeder. But I feel, even then, it's a deadly method. It's not a bad car. That's not a bad car. It's not a bad car. It's not a bad the biggest one so far, I think. Back he goes. Voila. I feel that method might be worth another cast. Recap on the deadly method. Bread plate. Pinched around. Keep that point clear. There's my swan shot quite close. The wind is howling. I'm just about hanging in there as far as fishing goes. Got a little bit too whoa, a little bit too far. Let's put it down there and await events. Let's get this other rod sorted. 
two at once. Sorry I couldn't show it to you guys. I've done it before, but I did think that other fish was much bigger than it was. Well, guys, we haven't spoken for a while. The fish has been nothing short of outlandish on the bottom. Just either popped up, um, crust six inches off, or just a piece of flake, big chunk of bread flake. Have wait for this. 16 carp to about eight pounds. I'm trying to get you a double to close out with. It's not happening. It's unbelievably black out here. That lot out there looks like it's got my name on it. Just been talking with Andy, the owner, and it is coming. Very, very windy. I've just tucked in here, it doesn't look it. I'm just going to try and get one close out fish for you. Probably touch lettering. I've got one down the margins here because where I wash my hands, there was a big fish moving in there. Whether I'll get that to crash around, I don't know. Let's see if I can get you one more fish to close out with. Let's see if we can get out there before that rain starts. Oh, bloody wind's got it. So you've really get two casts out of this. Guys are going to try it. I have to start it left. That might get away with it. Close the bail arm. Oh, I missed him. Didn't even get a chance to tighten up that time. Please don't go up the trees. And actually not being too bad. Now I've got to concentrate. Concentrate, concentrate. And wait for the tug. It's just hit the bottom about now, but the wind's got me. It's such an annoying, annoying wind today. It's putting a big belly in the line. Oh, I can't quite... No, I missed him again. It's that belly in the line that's doing it. Got one fish to close out with. By the way, I did have another one on 17 now. I had one on the inside. I've done one battery. That's where the battery went down. As soon as this hits the bottom, they seem to be on it. I feel the wind freshening. I feel the tangles coming. All right, let's try it. See, can we get lucky? That's a better cast than that. Something's wrong here, guys. I'm going to fish that one out anyway. See if I can get you a. a oh, I missed him. Got him, buddy. Got him. Perhaps I hadn't missed him. Okay, come in number 18. That shows you how effective touch ledgering with bread flake on the bottom is a single SSG, a hook, and that's all there is to it. Where we go guys? Shows the method works. He doesn't want to come out, he's out. Guys, I've thrown this one out. In a vain effort to get you a decent fish to finish with. Left it resting on my uh, tackle transporter. Take the slack up on that. Meantime, I see if I can't. Christ. Holy <laughs> That's what you call a bite, isn't it? That's what you call a bite. The barrow was going then. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, dear. This is my uh, patented rod, rod fighting method there. While I get myself sorted out, hopefully he stays on. Chunks of bread, OMG, it works. All right, take him out of the holder, my rod holder. Man, that was something. That was some take, wasn't it? OMG, that was some take. Get a bit of side strain on this kitty. Come on, man. 19, because the trouble is with 19, guys, you all know what that means, don't you? There's no spitting rain yet. 19 mines, if I get this one, I've got to, got to try for 20. And listen, there's the time, there's the time, I'm not lying, quarter past six. What time did I start? Quarter to three or something, three o'clock? Oh, he's come off. Why do I say stupid things like 19? Not to worry, keep the abuse to a minimum. More bread. Is that any good? Oh no, it's my battery, that won't catch much. Oh no, getting down, to, getting down to the end, people. That was some take. I'm going to try that again, that's fun. Good job I had it jammed in the, uh, in the old barrow. 
Don't give me any trouble, don't give me any trouble. Don't give me any trouble. All right, Smith at the back there. Just watch this rod for me, please. This time, try and keep your eye on it. It's an old rod, I don't want to lose it. Let's see if I can't get one. Touch ledger. So you don't actually need a buzzer or indicator. You just have to listen to the wheelbarrow getting dragged into the water. And again, we are tangled. I feel that needs a little bit of tension on it. Not much, there's the tip. There's a gap in the wind and it's got my name on it. Ah, it's still got me. I could be okay there. I want to be slightly left, if anything. And that's where my finger is across the line there. Just feeling for that tug. And obviously also watching. Oh, bumped him. Bumped him. Try again. Oh, God, what's happening? What's happening? What's the, what's the guru's going on? What's this going on? Oopsie. Oopsie. <laughs> Don't worry about it, people. The fish is still on. That's <laughs> what happens when you get tired and you've had too, too many fish. It's actually going, although I came just to show you about fishing with bread, it's going hugely, hugely more successful than I thought. And this is a ball buster of a session. 19 carp. Can't be bad, can it? Day ticket water, not syndicate, not private, regular day ticket water. No secret squirrel stuff. Not a big fish, I can feel it's not a big fish. Oh, there he is. Not a small fish. Mirror. I would have liked to have got him quick. I would have liked to have got him quick. He's in. Oh yeah. Nice fish. Go for the fast double cast, guys. If I can get them in the right spot. That is on the money. Smith, watch this rod please. I feel it's about to take off. I, in the meantime, will cast out this one and touch ledger with it. If I can get in there. Oh, there's a gap in the weed, a little bit far left. I'm gonna stand back so I can see this. Oh, these are out of kilter. Oh, it's a many fish, 19. Let's just get number 20. Got a tension up that. There he is, there's number 20 boys, and there's number 20 gone. Don't mention the numbers, Graham. Oh no, I'll tell you what's happened here. He's boiled in it, and look guys, that's how close I was. A scale on the hook. Big, huge, ka-chunking pieces of flake. They're loving it. They are loving it. Oh, now that one's on the money, I think. Just to tighten that a bit. Oh, that's number 20. How close is that? 10 seconds, and there's number 20 gone. Graham did not mention any numbers whatsoever. I'd hate to finish on 19. You can see how fast I'm fishing, guys. It's as fast as I can actually bait up. I'm getting the takes. Probably missing them on that right-hand one. And because I'm touch ledgering, I am getting the takes here. Sinking, sinking, sinking. Too bad, a little bit too far. But by the time it sinks, it should be okay. Second rod. That's on the money. Just watch this one on the right. 
it's a bit difficult to touch those with your left left hand. One fish away from 20. Just got bumped. Oh, too fast. Getting too keen now, guys. Getting too keen. Maybe a small piece of bread will be better. Here we go. This might do the trick. I think I might be a little bit too big. They could be. Let's try that small piece of bread. It could be on the money. Okay. And the wind's put a little bow in it to the <laughs> to the left. But does it matter? Because this is number. Don't say it, don't say it, Greg. Just don't say it. Don't mention any numbers at all. But that small piece of bread might have made the difference. Not a big fish, I can feel I got it in too quickly. Oh no, have we got the other line? We got another fish. That's actually another fish, I think. No, it's not. Trouble at mill. Right guys, I've outstayed my welcome, it is raining. Here comes the rain, I shouldn't have caught number 20. I'm gonna leave that out while I pack up. Smith can keep an eye on it. And now I'm going to get, it looks like, some kind of wet. one out oh yeah be fishing while I pack up there you go guys no, it's not. Whew. so Gonna get wet, so it doesn't matter. Keep the camera in there. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hope you got some tips about bread fishing there. 20 carp in an afternoon, few hours, I think it's pretty good. Look, trust me, they really are on the bite. Give it a go, give it a try with that popped up crust as well. And don't neglect that touch ledgerin. I mean, I've caught more touch ledgerin than I have actually watching the quiver tip. See you again on another show. Watch out for Mike's TA Outdoor Show. And I'm just about to get a free download myself of water. See you later.